Hello, and welcome to today's demo, NetSuite for Manufacturing. As a quick introduction to myself, my name is Matt Weisner. I'm a manufacturing industry principal within our supply chain center of excellence here at Oracle NetSuite, where I've spent the last three years. Prior to coming to Oracle NetSuite, I spent four years at Plex Systems. And prior to that, I spent more than 10 years working in the manufacturing and supply chain management industry, serving in roles from operations management up through buyer, planner, master scheduler, and ultimately director of supply chain for a large manufacturer. Throughout my career, I've been fortunate to spend time in multiple industries. I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about manufacturing within NetSuite. Today's agenda involves five points. We're going to discuss the NetSuite stack and the building blocks that we deliver at NetSuite. We'll discuss the suite success methodology and how we deliver our product. We'll discuss the NetSuite stairway for manufacturing and how manufacturers can scale within the NetSuite cloud. We'll have a demo of the product where we will get to dive into some of the different roles and see what people actually do in their day-to-day -day interactions within NetSuite. Lastly, we will review how what we have seen helps us to boost supply chain productivity. Let's start by discussing the NetSuite stack. NetSuite was born in the cloud and was designed to address an entire business. NetSuite is cloud first and cloud only, meaning it has all of the tenants you would associate with a real cloud solution. Access using any device, anytime, anywhere, consumer oriented, easy for anyone to pick up and use without extensive training. The NetSuite cloud fit for purpose and always up to date in real time. NetSuite's Suite Cloud platform offers unrivaled levels of personalization, customization, and development, all within a framework that ensures security, scalability, globalization, and built-in capability of being kept up to date with the latest versions of the software. Our cloud has led to a vibrant ecosystem of NetSuite practitioners and developers providing real business solutions, and everyone is on the same version of the same product. That is the power of the cloud for your company. NetSuite is able to deliver functionality that every business needs to be successful, such as HR, core financial, supply chain management, customer relationship management, and e-commerce. NetSuite is global. We're able to handle the difficult task of going global with features such as multi-book, multi-language, multi-currency, and multi-country tax compliance. NetSuite was built for your industry. We make sure that NetSuite has the functionality needed to support industries such as manufacturing, wholesale distribution, software, and retail, to name a few. NetSuite continues to focus on providing business intelligence that's useful and consumable by you and your users. Suite success is the combination of a multi-year transformation effort to combine the NetSuite Unified Suite, 20 years of industry leading practices, a new customer engagement model, and business optimization methods to a unified industry cloud solution. This means that we've taken all of our experience in implementing thousands upon thousands of customers, and we've said, how can we pre-configure our product and our methods in order to deliver an implementation that is much closer to the goal line? By implementing our sweet success leading practices, many times we can get folks through phase one and up and running in less than 100 days. Now, I want to introduce you to the NetSuite stairway for manufacturing. We want our customers to leverage the capabilities they need to generate the value they want by offering a stairway for manufacturers. We allow customers to determine what levels of capability they need in order to fulfill their business goals, rather than needing to implement everything in one large implementation. We allow customers to implement and to go live in stages. We deliver value quickly. We gain important buy-in from users within the company rather than burning out your most important resources with implementation fatigue. While we are striving to develop functionality such as industrial IoT, as you see in the dominate level of the stairway here, we also understand that many customers are just not quite to that level yet. Now let's take a look at what different users would experience within NetSuite starting on the shop floor with Dave Harrington. As you can see, Dave Harrington is logged into what we call our advanced manufacturing tablet interface. We can see here that Dave is logged in, and here is his work queue. Now, Dave's work queue has different filters, and today Dave is working in this SFO assembly work center, and so you can see that he is filtered on that work center. The nice thing about Dave's work queue is that it can be sorted by any of the columns that exist 
within this view. The other thing that we'll notice is that Dave is currently working on work order 295. That's indicated by the green highlight here on the work queue. Let's take a look at work order 295 and what Dave's got going on. Once we click on that work order from the work queue, we can now see that Dave has started this work order and he's been running since 926 a.m. and the current time is 934 a.m. There are eight minutes that have progressed since Dave started this work order. Now, Dave has many options here on the tablet. He can issue material, record scrap, and record downtime. The key to understand here is that anything Dave does on the shop floor within his work center, he can report that here. And this is what's gonna give us the data that we want to allow us to drive continuous improvement and production reporting within NetSuite. One other key feature is this information icon in the top right of Dave's tablet interface. Dave can click on this and see any instructions related to what Dave has to do here at this work center. Let's say Dave wants to issue some material. He needs to issue this PCD002. Dave will simply click on that material issue button, enter the quantity that he wishes to issue, locate the bin that that material is located in, and click OK. Now, if Dave were to incur scrap at this work center, Dave can choose any scrap code that's visible here, or he can use the other button to choose from the list of reasons that are available. We're gonna go ahead and choose electrical damage as our scrap reason. We'll go ahead and click OK, and then it'll prompt us for the quantity of scrap that Dave's incurred. And right now we're just gonna choose one. Now, as with any production environment, there are times where we do incur downtime. If Dave were to incur downtime here, let's say for machine breakdown, Dave can just select the machine breakdown option. And what you'll notice is that the background of his tablet turned yellow. And what's happened here, open downtime has started at 9.38 a.m. Again, we can still see what time we started our work order, how much time has elapsed, as well as the current system time of the work order. Essentially, when I start downtime, I'm starting another clock that's allowing me to track how much time I spend once Dave issue has been resolved and he's no longer in a downtime state, he simply comes to his tablet, clicks on the same downtime reason, and that takes him out of downtime. You'll also know that the background of the tablet turned green, indicating that we are now in a production status. Once Dave's produced all the parts that he needs to produce, he will simply enter production. To do that, Dave will come in and click on the enter production button, select the quantity he wants to produce, and click OK. Juan Garcia is Dave's supervisor. His dashboard shows him things like production downtime categories and production loss or scrap categories, as well as other reports like operating reports. One nice thing is Juan can cover over these reports and see that he's had 12 pieces scrapped for electrical damage, as well as four pieces scrapped for visual damage. Juan works for Melissa Seaver, who's our manufacturing production manager. Now, Melissa's involved in multiple different areas. So you can see that her dashboard is full of different information that helps her drive business on a day-to-day -day basis. Things such as work orders completed and work orders released. In addition to her KPIs, Melissa also has reminders so she can understand how many work orders need to be built, how many items need to be placed on purchase order, how many work orders have past due operations, and any lots that are about to expire. It's very important to understand for Melissa to have a complete view of her business, she needs more than just a main dashboard. She has dashboards related to shipping, and here she can see information about fulfillments, customer orders that need to be fulfilled, as well as KPIs directly related to shipping. She also has a dashboard for receiving, and her receiving dashboard shows her open POs that need to be received, as well as inventory status and weekly receipt history. Melissa also has a dashboard for receiving. Her receiving dashboard shows her things like how many orders need to be received? What's my historical receipt history? What's my current inventory look like? And which purchase orders need to be received? Now, Melissa also has an inventory dashboard, which shows her data directly related to inventory status as well as inventory values. Melissa also has a manufacturing dashboard. Her manufacturing dashboard shows her reminders about work orders that need to be built as well as capacity information about her work centers. Finally, I wanna show you Melissa's planning dashboard. This dashboard shows her items available to sell, including how much is on hand, on order, on sales order, and available to sell. Now let's take a look at Larry Nelson. Larry is a senior executive or the CEO. He has a dashboard that's completely different from the other users that we've discussed. Larry's interested in company-wide financials, things like revenue and expenses. 
Larry also has multiple different dashboards for different areas. For example, Larry has a board metrics dashboard. On Larry's board metrics dashboard, he has a manufacturing operations focused KPI portlet. And you can see things like created work orders and order fill rates. It's important to understand that these dashboards are completely customizable. Let's say Larry is really interested in this operating cash flow KPI meter and he wants it above the income KPI meter. All he can do is grab that and drag and drop it. He can move that meter anywhere he wants within his dashboard. Now, let's say that Larry is really interested in the KPI number for income of $899,000 this month. Larry can simply just click into that number and it'll take him straight to his income statement report so that he can review where that $899,000 is coming from. If he wants even more detail, he can click right into that number and he can get to his income statement detail report. Now this is going to provide all the detail behind the actual individual invoices that are making up that dollar amount of $899,000. Here in these dashboards, you're seeing the content that we deliver through our Sweet Success methodology in order to get you closer to the goal line as we talked about before. As we've just seen, NetSuite has the ability to help you boost your supply chain productivity. NetSuite provides a single source of truth, which is critical for supply chains that have multiple stakeholders and entities. Through personalized, process-driven dashboards, internal resources have the ability to act and react quickly and with purpose. In addition, access to vendor and customer portals from anywhere at any time via the cloud help to streamline communications across your supply chain. I'd like to say thank you for your time today. We here at Oracle NetSuite are looking forward to growing together with your business.